Welcome. The first X-ray flare of the new solar cycle, cycle 24, occurred just a couple of days ago. You might well ask what is an X-flare and why should I care? The importance of a flare is characterized by its peak X-ray emission. We get that from the NOAA GOES satellite which carries a small X-ray monitor on board. It is rather unimaginatively called the X-ray sensor, or XRS for short. It monitors the Sun in two bands, 1 to 8 angstroms and 0.5 to 4 angstroms. The important channel here is the 1 to 8 angstrom band, which is shown in red on the plot. Class A flares are minor events. Class B flares are 10 times larger than Class A, but still fairly minor events. 10 times larger than that are Class C flares, and these can start to get your attention. So what do we call flares that are 10 times larger than the Class C flares? Class D? No. Just when you think you've got the hang of the system, they change it on you. They call them Class M flares. And Class M flares can be very important events. Let's go 10 times larger again. Now we're at least 10,000 times larger than Class A flares. These are named Class X flares. They are rare and very important. Early on February 15th, a massive flare erupted on the Sun, an X2 flare. It is the first X flare of cycle 24 and shows the Sun to be continuing on a fairly normal cycle pattern, if somewhat slower and possibly less active than the previous ones. Using the fantastic new solar observation platform, the Solar Dynamics Observatory, we can look at different layers of the Sun's atmosphere which correspond to different temperatures. Here is the Sun as we normally see it, a bright disk with a few sunspots. Sunspots are just strong magnetic fields twisted and sheared, and that is where the flares get their energy from. But STO can look at the magnetic fields directly. Here white is positive polarity magnetic fields, i.e. coming towards you, and dark is negative magnetic fields going away from you back into the sun. The region that produced the flare is just below and to the right of sun center. Note it's far larger and more complex than any of the other regions. As we move up in the atmosphere we go to higher temperatures. The active region that produced the flare gets proportionally larger as we go to higher temperature EUV emission lines. That means that the region is much hotter and more active than the other regions. The reason for all this activity is that sunspots emerged so quickly and grew to be tens of thousands of kilometers across. Interaction of these magnetic fields, which, if you remember correctly, is what sunspots are, releases huge amounts of energy, often in the form of huge explosions, which we call flares. Now let's see what the flare looked like in the solar corona. Here we see the sun's outer atmosphere. The flare seems to be associated with an earthbound coronal mass ejection, which should be arrive any time soon. You can see the bubble of gas coming straight at us if you look carefully. Oh, lastly, that blue image I showed at the beginning. Before the UFO nuts start claiming that this is a fleet of spacecraft silhouetted by a bright flare, this is an artifact of the telescope. The mirror is made of many layers which you normally can't detect. But as the flare is so bright, the light bounces around many times, so we get lots of little flare images focused on the detector. That's it. Keep safe. Bye for now.